Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Baba Ganoush. That's right, not only am I going to show you how to make this fun to say and delicious to eat roasted eggplant dip and spread, but I'm also going to show you how to sax an eggplant. And don't worry, that only sounds inappropriate. But in the kitchen, being able to tell whether an eggplant is male or female is kind of a big deal, since the male eggplant have fewer seeds and are better to cook with. And how you can tell is actually very, very easy. We're simply going to look at the navels, where the stem attached to the eggplant, and if that indentation is kind of elongated, sort of a slot-shaped or slit-shaped, that is a female, as opposed to the male eggplant, which have more of a dot-shaped or round indentation. So we're going to stay away from that shape, because that's female and that's going to have more seeds, and we will look for the ones with the rounder indentations. And the way to remember this is with the saying, dots not slots. Hashtag dots not slots. So anyway, just a quick little eggplant buying tip. And just for fun, I ended up getting three male and one female eggplant, just for a little experiment. And what we need to do before we roast these, besides of course wash them, is prick that skin a few times with the point of a knife. They say if you don't do this, your eggplants will explode. And who needs that? Although they don't really explode, they just kind of split open. But regardless, we'll give them a few pokes with our knife, at which point these are ready to roast any way you want. All right, I'm gonna head out to the grill and do mine over charcoal, but this will totally work in a hot oven or even under the broiler. But if it is grilling season, this is the ultimate day after your barbecue recipe. And the reason is, after you finish grilling those burgers or chicken or hot dogs or whatever, generally your coals still have a lot of life left in them. So what I like to do after all the meat's grilled is throw some eggplant down and roast them while that grill's still hot. And that way those are ready to make a beautiful spread out of the next day. It's pretty much the perfect system. So if you know you're going to be grilling, buy some male eggplant and throw them down at the end of the festivities and you will have something very delicious to eat the next day. But anyway, we're going to roast these eggplant on the grill, and it's a very simple operation in that we're just going to keep turning these, grilling them on all sides, until they basically collapse and get really, really soft. So once they shrivel up and kind of look like this, I'll start poking around, and if I feel a spot that doesn't quite seem soft yet, I will try to maneuver that spot towards the hottest parts of the grill. And by the way, if it means leaning one eggplant against the other to keep it in position, that's totally fine. And once these do finally get soft, you can pull them off, but I do admit I like mine well done. So I tend to leave mine on the grill for a few extra minutes, which is going to result in a little smokier, albeit darker, baba ganoush. So this is how far I took mine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those off, transferring them into a mixing bowl, because what we're going to do when we head back inside is wrap this in foil and just let it kind of sit and steam there for about 15 minutes. And this is optional, but I feel like it helps transfer that kind of smoky grill flavor throughout the mixture. And then after 15 minutes, what we'll do is we'll unwrap it, and we'll let that cool down until we can handle it, at which point we'll peel off all that skin. Of course, I was totally impatient, and it was still too hot to handle, so I used a spoon to start scraping this into a colander. And by the way, check out all those seeds. Yes, that is the one female eggplant I bought. And it did have significantly more seeds than the male eggplants I bought. But anyway, one way or another, you're going to transfer everything that's not skin or stem into that colander. And like I said, if you're a little more patient and let these cool, you can just peel the skin off the whole thing. And right there you can see one of our beautiful, almost seedless male examples. And then once we've separated all that beautiful, warm eggplant flesh from the skin and stem, I'm just going to set that colander right on top and just let that drain for about 5 or 10 minutes. And once that's drained, we will transfer those perfectly roasted eggplant innards into a mixing bowl where we can mash this and introduce the rest of the ingredients. And if you want, those seed pods kind of stay together. So if you want to pull those out, go ahead. A little bit's not going to hurt you, but a lot of seeds can make the mixture more bitter. So I did pull some of those out, but that will be up to you and probably a moot point if you buy all male eggplant. So first up, I'm going to add a little bit of crushed garlic as well as a generous amount of salt. And then before we add the rest of our ingredients, we'll take a potato masher and we'll use that to mix, mash, and smash this down to something that's pretty creamy yet still has some texture to it. And some people like to use food processors or blenders and get this completely smooth, but I prefer mine a little bit on the rustic side, as do I think most baba ganoush aficionados. So I mixed and mashed mine until it looked like this, at which point we're going to stop and add the rest of the ingredients. So let's go ahead and squeeze in some fresh lemon juice. And just like every other ingredient in this recipe, totally to taste, I'm probably going to use about a lemon and a half. And then we want to add a little bit of tahini sauce, but not too much. I'm going to start with about two or three tablespoons. And then if I want more, I'll add more later. And you want to be a little careful because if you use too much, instead of making a baba ganoush, you're going to make a slippery hummus, which is not what we want. We're also going to do a little shake of cayenne, raise your hand if you're surprised, as well as some extra virgin olive oil. Something on the fruity side would be perfect. 
And then what we'll do is we'll switch to a whisk and give this a very good mixing, which is not only going to incorporate everything very nicely, but what's going to happen is some of the most fibrous parts of the eggplant that were located around that stem section, those are actually going to get wrapped around the tip of the whisk. And when we pull it out, that's going to come with it. All right, can you see that? So that was some classic multitasking right there. And that's pretty much going to be it except for one secret ingredient. I'm going to stir in a little bit, just a couple tablespoons of plain yogurt. It's an old trick a Lebanese friend taught me. So I'm going to stir that in. And technically at this point, our baba ganoush is done. But it is not even close to being ready to serve. Very critical, we have to wrap this up and chill it completely before the final seasoning. Because right now it's basically room temperature and it's impossible to taste all the flavors, which have not even fully developed yet. So what we want to do is wrap this up and pop it in the fridge for three or four hours or until completely chilled, at which point we can pull it out and then do the final seasoning. Okay, so at this point my baba ganoush is ice cold and we'll unwrap it and give it a stir and taste for seasoning. So I went ahead and I adjusted mine with more cayenne and salt. Like most vegetable dishes, this needs a good amount of salt. And an undersalted baba ganoush is a horrible baba ganoush. And then besides the cayenne and the salt, I also like to finish with a little bit of fresh herb, which includes a tiny amount of fresh mint that was literally one leaf, as well as a nice big pinch of Italian parsley. And we'll stir that in, and that could be it. But just to be sure, we're going to taste again and adjust if necessary. You are the Linden LaRouche of your baba ganoush. And speaking of brainwashing, if there's one thing I want to make sure I meld into your minds, it's never serve anything that you haven't tasted first. All right? And then once we are happy with the seasoning, we can go ahead and transfer that into some kind of serving vessel. And because the texture is what some people would describe as aesthetically challenged, we will distract the eye with some spoon-based indentations, also known as spoon dentations. And then as is customary, we will finish with a drizzle of olive oil and a little more Italian parsley. And that's it. Our baba ganoush is ready to baba ganache. And I'm just going to serve mine with some toasted pita triangles. And are those homemade or store-bought? Ooh, I'll never tell. All right, fine, they're from the store. But who cares about the pita when you have this amazing roasted eggplant spread? Just so tasty, so savory, so delicious, and yet actually very, very light. And like I said, if you can manage to roast these over a charcoal fire, it's going to be that much more delicious. Because you're going to get that little bit of smokiness in the background that really brings us all together. But anyway, that's it. Baba ganoush, a very simple and very delicious eggplant spread. Plus, you also learned how to tell if an eggplant is a male or a female. I mean, even if you don't cook, vegetable-based trivia like that is casual cocktail party conversation gold. All right, so you got that going for you. But anyway, eggplant gender aside, I really do hope you give this delicious spread a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.